You're now learning another detail about the rape investigation involving a man accused of trying to lure an 11 year old and sexually assaulting a 16 year old here in Jacksonville. Both girls were walking alone on the west side in broad daylight when they say a man that looks like this started talking with them. Now we know the 11 year old was approached at 315 in the afternoon. The 16 year old was grabbed at 830 in the morning. These are common times that a child would be walking to and from school. Belinda Swan is with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and joins us via Zoom. Thanks for being with us, Belinda. My pleasure. So there are certain times of day that school-aged children are, are, are considered most at risk of abduction, and it sounds like these two times are right in where your statistics show. You're absolutely right. Children are most likely to be abducted between the hours of 7 and 9 a.m., 3 to 4 p.m. and then again between 6 and 7 p.m. and as you mentioned these are oftentimes children are either on their way to school on their way home or perhaps playing outside after dinner and what's difficult too is is that you know as much as we tell our children stay in groups you can't always do that when you're walking to and from school given the times of other kids who are going as well so that said belinda what are some of the common ploys in your experience that you've seen that a would-be abductor uses to try to get a child to come closer to them that is such an excellent question, and I can share with you that NCMEC has analyzed data based on reports made to the center over the course of 10 years. So I can share with you that some of the most common ploys that perpetrators utilize to uh, lure our children include perhaps um, bringing along a puppy or a kitten and using that to, of course, pique a child's interest and to attempt to get them closer to them. Uh, another is to fake an emergency and approach a child and say, you don't know me, but I know your mom and dad. There's been an accident and I'm going to take you to them. Uh, another that may um, uh, uh, specifically uh, resonate with older children and teens is a perpetrator may have a camera along with them and say, you know what, you're, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, let me take your picture, I can help you to be connected with a modeling agency or an agent. Uh, so these are all some of the more common ploys. Of course, the, uh, the one that most folks may think about having candy, money, or toys, or simply offering a ride to a child who may be walking home alone, especially if it's particularly hot, rainy, cold, et cetera. So it's interesting because I think as we try to educate our, our children about who they should and should never speak to, one of the most important things to do is to tell them how to react should someone come That's up to right. them. And, and the reality is it's okay to tell them to be rude. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, perpetrators prey on children. Uh, there are so many reasons they do so, but by nature of being a child, they're vulnerable. But when you add to that, that we are raising our children most of the time to be uh, respectful and courteous to uh, adults uh, and to take their guidance and that adults are folks that they should trust. But the bottom line is that not every adult has good intentions. And when a child feels uncomfortable, we have to encourage them to trust their gut. It's okay to say, no, thank you. It's okay to ignore them. It's okay to say, I don't want to see your puppy. It's okay to say, leave me alone and keep on walking. We have to have these common, common sense conversations with our children. And if I may add, oftentimes as adults, we may uh, take for granted that some of these things are common sense, but have we actually ever had these conversations with our children? It's up to us to empower them with information to help them to make better decisions and empowering them to be rude to a stranger, especially an adult, that's perfectly okay and have that conversation more than once, but multiple times as they get older. So Belinda, oftentimes Absolutely. these abductors threaten physical violence against a child. I mean, how do you mitigate that when you're trying to teach your child to fight and scream and kick to get away? Sure. I would say that the most important thing in those situations is to make sure our children know that the most important thing is not what the perpetrator is saying, it's to get out of that situation. So it's okay to kick, fight, scream, yell, just try to get away from this immediate danger. Uh, most of the time, that again is another scare tactic to try to uh, uh, lure the child or take advantage of the child. So we have to, uh, again, empower our children to know that, you know, put that aside, just scream, kick and yell and do whatever you can to get the attention of a trusted adult or to get away from the situation entirely. Yeah, predators want an easy target. Make it hard for them. Belinda Swan is with the Absolutely. National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.